Yeah, so here we go with part three. Uh, part three, we're gonna cover uh, getting our rocker carrier assembly bolted on to the top of the cylinder head. Um, we're gonna rocker shafts bolted in, put our valve bridges on, run our valve lash, and then pretty much after that, it's just uh, the only thing I probably will cover. I mean, basically put all the garbage back on it. Uh, I got a couple sensors that I broke. I mean, they're so flimsy. I mean, I got to see what sensors I need to order. Um, one of them was on the intake manifold. I think I laid the chain or something on it, pulling the engine and it just snapped right off. Just cheap stuff, you know. But it's the way it goes. I broke a few sensors in my day. Um, and then after that, put the intake manifolds, exhaust manifolds. I got some paint. I got to paint this, paint the cylinder head and get it shined up. And, and then I'll, the only other thing I'd really like to cover before I stick the engine in is uh, I'll pull this plug and we'll make sure this pump, because I had this pump out of here in the field. I want to make sure this pump's timed right. And I'll show you how to do that. It's real easy with it out. It's kind of a pain. You got to use a mirror. I use a mirror with them off when it's in the tractor and I can look in there and see where my pump notch is so my time at mark okay that is backwards Patience, Daniel, son. Patience. God, I got some shit around here, man. Boy, this year could have thought of something a little bit better than this. Kind of a hokey setup for a rocker carrier. Pretty hokey setup. flop around there where they're supposed to be, be kind of nice. They're all spaced correctly. Hm. Well, this thing's a real pain in the butt. If you can get them flipped over without the rest of them flipping over on you, be really cool. It's been quite a little bit of a challenge right now. I just like to make those stay still. It'd be ideal. So I got two in between these, two in between these. This one slid down, and I gotta get this one to go over. Alright. I think I'm finally maybe getting somewhere on it. getting somewhere.
We're getting her, guys. set up in it. All right, now you can start putting your caps on. You'll notice that this one has a feed hole in it. That's going to be your first one right there. something and try to get the shaft to move a little bit on me. set all them up like that on there. I mean, those can only go one way, yeah. I mean, you can't really mess that up. Okay, now they're all sitting in their square like they're supposed to be. Alright guys, so that's the way to do that and then set the thing on top of it. That's a lot easier than trying to put it on there, put the rocker shaft on top with the carrier already bolted on. I'm going to look up the torque specs because I know you can torque these two bolts down before you stick it on there. I'll look that up. I'll be right 55 back. for the rear cap screw. Six foot pounds for the front cap screw. I don't think that's the right size socket. Is that the right size socket on there? Seems a little too big. Oh, I got a 17, so I need a 16. I thought I had the right size socket on there. That's 15. Oh, where's my 16 at? 16 millimeter. Well, and it fell off the socket rack, rattling around on a washboard road, I'm sure. Torque this one 26 foot pounds. Yeah, we'll stick her back on there. Oh, don't knock 
that over, it's full of oil. Alright, back to the torque wrench off. There we go again. Now all these rockers are going to flip over on us, I'm sure. Well, they actually got a little tension on them now. See, this is the way to do it. They got a little tension on them springs now. Okay, so lesson learned, guys. This is the first one of these I've done. So, there's a good lesson learned. Do it on the ground like that. Put your rockers on. And just slide your whole assembly. We're going to have to make sure all our push rod push rods and all that stuff get lined up. All right. Make sure we're on our dowels. I think we're on it. We just got to get our push rods to line up correctly. Yeah, that's what's going on, I think. Push rod somewhere holding us, holding us off or something. push rod before you start sensing that down. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, back all your adjustments off. You know, I've done this for so long that I've just know what to watch, look for, but if you're not feeling comfortable with that, back you know, back your valve adjuster, your valve lash adjusters, back them all off to where they're they're loose. They're all in there. And we gotta put our injector wire and harness back in it. We'll put the valve cover on. We'll get this assembly oil that they've got on the head to keep it from rusting. We'll get very clean and clean that off the best we can. Put our exhaust manifold on, our intake manifold, and then we'll paint the head and we'll let that paint cure it for a little while. Alright, so I gotta get some Loctite on this one. And we'll start torquing them down. Those are torqued at 52 foot-pounds. Darn, that came out of there in a hurry, didn't it? Okay. I need a little sword extension. Once we get that bolted down, I'll show you where we're at according to our valve arrangement. And we're going to start from the center and work our way out.
52 foot pounds. All right, so you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So go two, three, four. Start here in the middle. Make sure you don't have anything binding up. I don't even usually go clear to the full torque. I'll pull the middle one down a little ways and pull the next one over. Make sure all these, you know, make sure your rockers here where they're spaced, make sure nothing's hanging up anywhere. It's the biggest thing to really watch out for. sure these stay in there because they'll move on you you'll go to adjust the valves on it start turning the engine over and you didn't see it and the son of a gun will be out on you and it'll bind up it'll bind up on you and won't turn over it'll get stiff on the crankshaft when you're turning it and then you'll be going what in the hell is going on here We're pretty good. All right, so now I feel comfortable about go ahead and doing the final torque. And just go to one next to it. Just go on each side of it till you get to the ends. I like doing these Packer engines because to me it's just they're, they're, just, they're if you do truck engines a lot with jake heads on them, doing one of these is, just seems like it's just easier because there's not jake heads and all that stuff to contend with like you would have on a truck engine. Alright, so let's find out where we're at. See, I was wrong. Those are higher. It's hard to tell. See how both these valves are loose? Well, that one is not loose. That one is. Yeah, that one's got a little bit of play in it. We're on number six is where we're at. Both of these are tight. This one's in valve overlap. So, a little bit of valve lash on that one. Not much. You can either run it clear around to one and start from one, or you can start at six, whatever you want to do. I'm going to start from six. I know I'm on top dead center compression number six. Sure look like those were higher on uh, on number one, but see, I was wrong. It was on it was on number six. So I'm on top dead center compression number six so I took a picture of each one with my phone see what I'm doing in the field it's easier for me to do it like this and I'll set that like that somewhere where I can see it might have to move it again but uh, we're gonna do obviously number both intake and exhaust the short rockers are your intake and the long rockers are your exhaust now something I can stress to you because I've done it before you gotta be really careful with these studs. When that comes loose, you don't come over there and break the stud off. Actually, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and get a socket and get them loose, and that way I don't take a chance doing that. It'd be the smart thing to do anyway. Try to find mine. That would be the smart thing to do. 17 millimeter intake exhaust valve intake and intake clearance is uh, 18 thousandths and exhaust is 21. Okay, so those are both loose. And I had to find my Allen wrench now that I had out for that. It is. 
All right. 21 there. Oh, that's 20. That's 21. The exhaust. That's too tight, I'll tell you that. Tell these farmers, you know, about once a you know every winter, you guys need to pull the valve covers off these newer engines and adjust the valves on them because they don't have hydraulic lifters in them. You know, stuff gets worn on a mechanical valve train like this with flat tappet lifters, and you know the older engines didn't do that because they didn't have so much carbon in the oil from the EGR system. But if you're going to run these newer engines with this emissions on them, you've got to run your valve lash check stuff or you're asking for it there. Let's go 18 on the other side on the intake. have a, a lot of truck engines you'll have a lot of slack in your threads on these adjusters and then when you tighten that down it'll change it'll change it out in the end you'll feel it all right so there we go we got those two so the next one we're going to be doing is get around here so we did number six intake and exhaust so the next one we're going to do is five intake this one right here pretty much anyone that's on the flat load with the cam that's the one you're going to be doing again I talk to machines I talk to anything that'll listen I see my 
lost that. I lost that good title in me. Yep, simple valve adjustments like this will save you a lot of money. Careful, it's right in there. Whack one of those. Studs with the end of the inner wrench and knock the injector off and run the injector. Just not a really good spot. I need some different end wrenches, is what I need. Some of them bigger one offsets, is what I need. Thing about this mechanic in game, you never get done buying tools. That's a never ending thing. So then we're gonna do number uh, three. Let's see, we did number five intake, and we're, we're gonna do four exhaust. That's pretty easy to tell. See, I can't get a 21 thousandths in that one. It's, loose, it's tight. I know, you guys are bored. Sometimes just kind of go, you know, just to feel, feel that one and fill the other exhaust one you just adjusted. And they feel about the same kind of, same kind of slack in them. All right. Come on there, bone, wake up. Then we're gonna do three intake and then two exhaust. And then we'll roll the engine over 360 degrees and do the rest of them. So, six, five, four, three. It's a little bit tight. Yeah, I can't get I can't get that in there. You like that heater sis, huh? Huh dude, do you like that heater too, buddy? Yeah. I kind of parceled to it myself. Oh, come on. You're kind of a pain the way the recess down inside, down there in that rocker carrier. Kind of a pain to get your feeler gauge where you want it. You'll notice on Cummins, the older Cummins especially, they'll Use a five to six inch mount torque wrench on a lot of their adjustments, valve adjustments and stuff like that. And the reason for that is, you know, a lot of the guys taught you to go off drag, you know, in here, the feel. Everybody has a different feel. Everybody has different strength. Everybody has bigger hands, smaller hands. So Cummins, you know, with the five to six inch pound 
T-handled torque wrench, that whole thing was that everybody was setting them the same way. You know, so you tightened that center one and it clicked to five to six inch pounds, it was set. Which is not a bad idea. Okay, number two exhaust. And then we start back. Roll it around 360 degrees and what there isn't a whole lot of you know that one feels pretty damn good I think I'm gonna leave it alone all right guys so I'm gonna roll it around 360 degrees and we'll pin the flywheel again just take you a 5 16 bolt and stick in there where's my bar at Where's my bar, buddy? Where's my bar, partner? Pull the bolt out. Engine to use, engines on these are going to spin clockwise from the front, counterclockwise from the rear. Now, hopefully, we get to turn it over and we don't have something bind up on us. We got good compression, I know that. I can feel it. And the intake rocker starting to come up. So that one's on the intake and stroke. doing buddy because I want you to pet me dad there we go flywheels pin partner okay now no, both valves on number six should be tight they're tight that's in valve overlap see how tight this intake valve is just ain't right. It's a good thing you're doing the valve lash on it. Let's get her valve set, sweetheart. Duke says, I've been doing this and hanging around you long enough, Dad. I could probably do them. adjusting these guys is hold that center because it'll turn and affect your adjustment out here so you've got to hold the center while you're tightening the, the jam nut and check it again it's pretty good okay Oh, 
bridge. Oh, I just spotted a problem. That bridge wasn't on there all the way. I knew something didn't feel right. That's another thing to check. Make sure when you're putting that rocker on, your rocker shafts and stuff, make sure all your valve bridges, one didn't come unpuckered on you. Which that one did, and it kind of threw things off a little bit. Take exhaust, two intake, and three exhaust, and we get it. That heater's gonna get turned off because I can't take it anymore. It's roasting me out of here. been the best heater I've ever had. I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna get two of them. This one gets really cold. It won't quite keep up with the big building, but it's just it it just works so good. It don't stink. It's not noisy like them already heaters work. Oh, those things would run you out of the building. You eyes you get to couldn't breathe. It stinks so bad. God, these little things are terrible. A lot of years we used them though. That's all we had. That's all they had. that's all they offered. <laughs> For a shop heater, I'd rather have a wood stove than, than have one of those red heaters out. I hate those things. Yep, they'll just gas you out so damn fast you won't know what to do. Well, let's go around on this side. Three exhaust is gonna be the next one. Look how loose that thing is. I bet you what happened on this thing. Either one got tight or one got loose, and I got a feeling one got loose, and then the bridge fell off, and then it got bound up in there sideways, and the rocker hit it and shoved the valve down and then the piston hit it. Got a feeling that's probably what happened to this gal. Obviously going to be doing the intake on number four because we or the let's see here yeah the intake on number four because we did the exhaust last time should be this one here look at all that slop in there You can do this in a tractor, but most of the time on these 6170Rs, 
Turbo and all that crap's got to come out of there to get to it. It's a pain in the butt. Another one of those fine engineering deals. And then we're gonna do five exhaust, and then we're done. And we'll go ahead and roll it around, just to make sure nothing binds up, that we didn't screw something up. And I'm gonna double check, make sure all my valve bridges are where they're supposed to be. some 90 degree feeler gauges. I'll give me a set of those. Make, I'm going to start doing these more often. It'll be a lot easier. These got kind of a 45 degree bend on them, but it ain't quite enough for this application. So, hey guys, I, I, I want you guys to, like Dave over there, at, uh, uh, precision ag tuning specialty ag tuning I got it wrong specialty ag tuning I, I think he told me that they were pressure washing or steam cleaning them DPF filters out so I want to make sure on that because that's you know the owner scared to death of the California Air Resource Board which I don't blame him I mean they'll try to ruin you if you circumvent any of their emissions products all right guys so let's uh oh yeah david send me a message or something let me know what you think there on that i'm pressure washing that versus bacon because i haven't had very good luck with bacon them you get good compression up on us. That's always a good thing. Okay, so let's check and make sure all our valve bridges are where they're supposed to be. Nothing's too loose or something. Good there. So next thing we're gonna do, guys, put the injector wiring harness on. And let me find it in the mess here. Okay. Pull your little clip off here, like that. You got a bunch of little Allen screws in here, boy. There's a bunch of dirt on that. I gotta go clean this thing off. I can see the grit on it. Yeah, I'll be back. Let me clean this up good. Trigger wire harness installation. So slide this through the hole here. Just put your clip on there. 
All right, so you got a bunch of hold downs here. And those are supposed to be torqued to nine, nine foot pounds. We'll just go ahead and go like this for right now. Get them started in there. And I'll go get me a five millimeter socket and torque those. Get this one down in here. Okay, take some blue Loctite and put on these injector studs on all these, and then tighten the capture nuts to 1.5 foot pounds, or if you get an inch pound. What I'm going to do is go to inch pounds. So, one foot pound is 12 inch pounds, so 18 inch pounds. So, I got to get some blue lock tight and I'll torque these hold downs to nine foot pounds and we'll put the rocker cover on and then we'll get an intake and exhaust rocker cover installation. Got our gasket on there. And these will be torqued to 26 foot pounds. And then we can get our intake and exhaust manifolds on there and start getting her painting. And I'll go work on a dump truck for a little bit and I'll come back. Maybe my paint will be set up and we'll put the rest of it together. And we'll be getting pretty close here this afternoon to maybe tomorrow or the next day. I guarantee we'll have a run in this, this weekend. I know this thing here, this goofy thing here is for that EGR thing. I'm trying to remember where that goes. It goes right there. this off when I had with it still in the tractor probably gonna have to go find some more bolts here laying over there somewhere so I already can tell you right now that I'm gonna be short Yeah, I am short. These, these shorter bolts went in here, a bunch of different brackets and stuff. And I know that went right there. So, we need one, two, three, four, five bolts that are probably laying in the cab. So I'm gonna go find all them bolts that are laying all over there somewhere and tighten these down to 26 foot pounds. And uh, then we'll put intake and exhaust manifolds on, put the water pump on. I want to put all that stuff on before I paint it. I don't want paint inside the cylinder head. And, you know, I don't care about getting paint on the exhaust manifold. It'll burn it off. Or the intake manifold either, so. All right, guys. My five-wheel pin. An important thing to note when you're timing this common rail pump. Okay. If you were pulling one of these pumps out in the field, make darn sure that you're on top dead center compression number one. Because you can pin that flywheel and you can be 360 degrees off and be on top dead center compression number six instead of number one. So out in the field, what you would normally do is the first thing you would do is turn that, put your turning tool right here and then turn that till the flywheel pins. And then you'll pull this plug out, right? where we can see down there in the hole. All right. Damn flashlight is almost too bright. Okay. See the time end mark right there? That needs to be lined up 
with that right there. So I'm pretty well dead on. You'll see kind of a brown spot right there. That's where it needs to be. So line it up, I don't know if you can even see that here with this camera. If I turn it on bright, it's too damn bright. Let me get my other flashlight. This one's, I like my old flashlight. It had three settings on it. This one's only got two, and this is supposed to be their better one. I don't like it. My old one had three settings, a, a medium, or a low, medium, and then bright setting, and then a strobe. But when you're trying to look in a hole like that, that medium setting seems to be about the best. This one here, it's, just, it's either all or none, you know? And then the battery don't last on it. Okay, let's go to... All right. See the timing mark? You can barely see the little round piece on the back of the case back there. That's where you want it, okay? Thought I would touch on that. That's how you, you know, make sure when you're doing that, because that you're, you know, if you're, you could be 360 off if that, if you pin the flywheel and you come up here and you look and that mark ain't there then you need to go around again all right guys so we've been hard at her we'll make this thing go back together here uh, so we're getting ready to lift the engine up and put the pan on it got the Boy, it, I think it took longer. It took almost a whole day just to get all the emissions crap and wiring harness and all that stuff back on there and the tubes and wiring and wow. There's a bunch of it on this thing. So, oh, I guess I ought to plug that in, huh? Let's see how many of these when I hook it back up. I, I broke one of these sensors right here. Uh, that's an exhaust gas temperature sensor or something for the EGR. Uh, it's it's between the air throttling valve and the where it goes into the intake so I'll have to look that up and see what they're calling that get one of those but uh, I gotta get the forklift fired up I need to back this baler and this 40 2940 out of here and I'd, I'd like to stick that son of a gun in there tonight if I could but uh, I might be uh, I might be a little bit too ambitious I got to see what time it is but Oh, we're coming a long ways on her now, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna get the forklift and get the I still got to get the pan and get the pan cleaned up and and uh, we're we're making some headway on her though. Well, I'm tired. I'm gonna put it in in the morning. It's uh about six o'clock. I left it left the house at right at five, so I have 13 hours today. It'd be about 14 by the time I get home. So, we pretty well got her together. In the morning, I'll come in, uh, chain it up, lift it up on the forks on the forklift, and uh, put that motor mount apparatus, firewall, whatever the hell they call it, put it on there, and uh, clean the block surface off on the bottom I got the pickup tube for the pump on there uh, and then put the pan on it and then we're gonna stick her in the tractor so hopefully here in the next day or so we'll have this thing running and I'll have to I'll have to get it on once I get everything plugged in turn it on uh, put the injector trim files in it and then uh, I still got to clean that filter out before I stick it back on there. I'm gonna blow it out and wash it out and try to get that thing cleaned out. And then uh, what's what, what we'll have to do is we'll get it running and make sure everything runs fine. And then we'll have to uh, do a forced regen on it. And just, that's one way to get her broke in, do a forced regen, let it sit there for about four, four hours doing a regen. Well, all right, guys. Uh, so the next video on the 6170R will be putting the engine back in it.